uh, Scottish Heritage Partnership, and I'm just going to speak for about 30 seconds, and there should be a video to follow which uh, explains probably better than I could what we've actually been doing. So I'll just, brief, uh, br just briefly go through uh, the people on the project. That's myself, Mari Pettock, who's the PI. Lorna Hughes here is one of the co-investigators. Co uh, Steve Comer, who is also, is also here, who's creative director of Solus Digital, who's the industry partner, and Leo Konstantelos, who is uh, the research associate, and also not able to be here, Maria Economou is CI, and Agiati Benadu as the research associate. Policy. The culmination of our work has, has attracted quite a lot of interest in the policy sphere, particularly linked to the Scottish Government's crystallising cultural strategy, uh, responses to which from uh, sector and stakeholders uh, were, had to be in by October and which is currently in the process of finalisation. And lastly, promise. If we were to be funded for a phase two of this, we have three particular plans beside those arising under policy to extend the discussion and the evidence base uh, via Historic England, to uh, engage in commercial conversations via Interface, which is a Scottish Government-supported uh, organisation for uh, co-hosting co and arranging uh, a speed dating between businesses and academic research, and to look at content development in the museum sector via Universeum, the Association for University Museum Professionals in Europe, where a huge amount of content is available and not all of it is being sufficiently utilised. But now, <coughs> video. The Scottish Heritage Partnership was established by an EPSRC, AHRC award on immersive experiences. The partners are the University of Glasgow, Solus Heritage, the National Trust for Scotland, National Library of Scotland and Glasgow Museums. Its goals were to explore the audience data of immersive experiences of all kinds in Scotland to provide evidence for design and procurement values in immersives for the heritage industry. Its core questions were, how successful are the current approaches to immersive technologies at major heritage sites in Scotland? What kinds of future development in procurement and design are supported by this evidence? Tourism is a £6 billion business in Scotland and there are some 17 million visits annually to heritage and culture sites in Edinburgh and Glasgow alone. Immersive experiences are on the rise and audiences are changing fast. The Scottish Heritage Partnership collated new data for government, cultural and creative industry use. We asked visitors how they responded to the immersive experiences at a number of sites and any issues they experienced. We surveyed sites with mixed immersive experiences, including VR, video games, surround video, multimedia rooms, reconstructed interiors, and themed outdoor spaces. What kinds of immersive experience are best? Audiences like immersive experiences but prefer mixed virtual and physical experiences with a blended experience and a strong storyline. Content was regarded as important, irrespective of the mode of delivery. Less gimmicks and more content. Intangible heritage requires a thickening of the narratives of contemporary museological practice. Under 35s are the most comfortable with entirely VR and digital based experiences. Audiences prefer the option of handling objects alongside the experience. 
reaction's been entirely positive from what I've heard. People have really enjoyed being able to see the digital versions of the models and then perhaps see some reconstructed objects that we have and then to see the object in the gallery. So that variation of, of ways of looking at material is, is proved to be very stimulating, I think, for people. I think we're always looking for new ways of complementing the collections. Um, our reason to be as a museum is to try and reach the widest possible audience. And we see virtual reality as, as a new way of reaching audiences who perhaps previously haven't found the museum as inspiring or as, as, as accessible as they might through virtual reality. Physical objects are best, but even virtual object handling is preferred to a purely virtual environment. What is the site demographic, and do I want to change it? Can it replace guided tours and audio guides completely? How will it enhance interpretation and content, and for whom? What is the balance in the visitor experience between a recreated and a virtual environment, and why? How will touch complement sight in the VR elements of the experience? Will certain demographics experience nausea from 360 immersion? Will audibles be needed? And if so, can they be subtitled? What other accessibility considerations would be needed? How many of the five senses are you reaching? Does smell have a role to play? What kind of exciting and substantial narrative is needed to make up for the lack of a social dimension in VR? Can digital content be available in part to engage more younger adults and children? How can we personalize content? Where will the immersive experience be cited and how will it be mixed? with existing content to maximize audience response? What physical material should the immersive project enhance or work in conjunction with? What is the value added by VR or AR? And does it justify the maintenance and development costs of ongoing technical upgrades? VR or AR or haptic delivery what is the comparative efficacy, objectives and costs? SHP findings using data from six sites strongly suggest the need for mixed immersive experience, additional digital resources for younger demographics, strong high content narrative, object handling, We'll be sharing our detailed findings with Nesta and Scottish Government.